there! I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and thanks for showing up for me on this Saturday morning. You are my girlfriends and I can't wait to share details of my life with you for about the past, oh my gosh, I'm trying to think. This all started last about August 12th and that was the day that I retired. August 14th I had a stroke and my life just went on and on from there. As those of you who followed my channel, you know that I recently purchased a new home, which was kind of out of the blue. A lot of you were really surprised at my age that we purchased actually a slightly larger home, but all of a sudden out of the blue, I, I've always wanted to live on a lake. All, all of our years of our marriage, we, we lived in a lot of houses. And I have to tell you something. A lot of you were surprised because the house that we purchased needs a lot of work. It pretty much needs a total redo. And you're like, why would you buy a house when you totally need to redo everything about it? You must not like it very much if you're going to redo every, every wall, every countertop, everything about the house. And there is something that I haven't shared with you about my life. And that is that all of our lives, me and my husband, Alan, we've been married 42 years. And actually, about a month before we got married, we actually purchased our own home together, our first home together. We both made minimum wage. I was the hostess of a children's TV show, making about a thousand bucks a month. He was a he was an audio guy at that point at the local NBC affiliate, making another about a thousand bucks a month. We both made minimum wage. We bought the house that we could afford, which was a little thirty-two thousand dollar house in a not very good neighborhood but we completely fixed the whole thing up. And in a year, we sold it to a friend of ours who really liked the, the work that we had done. And then every about three years thereafter, through the course of our marriage until 13 years ago, we pretty much bought a new house. We flipped our own house. So it is not at all unusual for us to buy a house that needs as much work as this one does. And I do want to clarify that because a lot of you thought I was putting down the house or putting down the seller's taste. And that really couldn't be further from the truth. I just have certain things I like in a home. I like light, bright, airy, cheery, happy. And to me, that's generally white woodwork because when you get into the darker woodwork, it, it can be lovely, but it is generally softer and cozier and kind of darker on the inside. And I really like things to be light. And basically every house we owned, we would paint the trim white. So that is nothing new for me. And if you'd like to see a brief look at the history of our home improvement thus far, we've lived in this house now in the basement because the first floor is being redone. We have lived here two weeks and I'll show you a real quick look at where we are right now at the end of this video. Also, I am in a new makeup room. This is the makeup room in the new house and you can kind of tell that because the walls are gold and so that will change. But for now, it is working out very well. This is the first video I'm shooting in my new house. So that's pretty exciting for me. Okay, let's just kind of have a chat about what has happened to me. 10 months ago, I had a situation at work and my sister and I have owned a company together for gosh, 28 years now, a long, long time. And I love my sister dearly, but there are problems that arise when you work with family and our company is no exception. Basically about three years ago, my son Dylan came in to kind of replace me. And so I was allowed to retire back in August from that company. And quite honestly, at first I thought, this is wonderful. I can do YouTube every day. I was so excited about it. And that was true for about the first month of retirement. First four to six weeks, I would say, I thought it is heaven to be able to just work on videos all day, every day. But then at that point, it also kind of became a hell to work on videos all day, every day, because Alan would go off. We have rental houses and things. And so he would go off to work on the rentals every day. And I would be in my studio room, in my makeup room, alone all day long doing videos. And I got lonely. I got really lonely. And for those of you who have really been following YouTubers for a long time, sometimes they take breaks. And I really believe it is because mental health wise, it is difficult to be on social media, not just because you get the haters. And although I say those mean, nasty comments from the haters don't hurt, I'm a human being and, and they do hurt. And you know, I try not to think about them. And for the most part, I don't. 
but there was always that. Well, actually, that was my carpenter getting back with me because we've had a situation lately, and that is that he started the house and he took out this wall in the great room, which was wonderful, and he started ripping apart the bathroom, and it is in shambles. And at first I was doing a video showing you day by day the progress of this home improvement, but then he came for a few days and then stopped coming for a long time. And so, I don't know, we're going back and forth and back and forth. There are problems sometimes when you, when you work on your house. Let me know in the comment section if you've experienced those. But he did just say he's about to give me a timeline for completions. So that is really, really good. I'm so happy about that. Okay, where was I? Where was I? Okay, so in other words, I was six weeks into retirement and the bloom was off the rose and I was lonely and I really missed the girls that I work with. In Laura and my company, we have 10 employees, so it's not a huge company, but every morning, you know, you'd say hi to everybody. You'd have lunch together sometimes with some of the employees. There was some camaraderie there, some work friendship, I guess, and I really miss that. And let me know in the comments section if you have retired, how you handled it, because I think it is a challenging time. When I was in my 40s, I dreamt of retirement. You know, we could not have afforded it then at all, but I just dreamt of the day when, gosh, my life is paid for, I don't have to work. Well, one thing I realized when I got six weeks into the retirement was that I actually didn't mind working, and I certainly liked the social life of being with people every day. And also there's something about having to get up, having to get up in the morning and get dressed, get your makeup on and go out to work. It gives you structure to your day and it's a little tough when that ends. But anyway, going back to that, that was, that was six weeks into retirement. But actually on the day I retired, four days later is when I had the stroke. And I continued with YouTube. I never even missed a video because fortunately I realized I was having a stroke early. I got a clot buster and I don't seem to have any residual problems from having had the stroke, which is just wonderful. But when I was in the hospital, they were trying to figure out why I had the stroke. They said one reason could be that I had a tiny hole in my heart and I have a procedure coming up to close that hole in my heart within the next month. So I'm excited about that because then that chapter of my life will be over, which is just great. But they also found something incidental when they did a brain scan to look at the stroke, which was a little blood clot in my brain. That's what my stroke was. But when they were doing the brain scan, they realized that I had an aneurysm in kind of a difficult part of my brain. And I went to a neurologist and he said that while the aneurysm did not cause the stroke, that it could rupture in the future and that it was probably a good idea to have the aneurysm, what they call coiled. And basically an aneurysm is a little bump on the blood vessel and little clots can get up in that little bump. But what the neurosurgeon does is he goes in and he puts what he calls a coil in that, which is tiny, tiny little pieces of stainless steel or some kind of metal that are like hair thin and he fills up the bump part. So the blood now flows smoothly and there's much less chance that that aneurysm will rupture, which would have been a brain bleed, which can cause brain damage, death, all kinds of not fun things. So anyway, that was pretty crazy that just after I retired, I did have the stroke. So I was dealing with all the medical issues and having had the stroke, I looked at reasons, dietary reasons that could have caused the stroke. And I did have high cholesterol because I was on the carnivore all meat diet, meat, cheese, bacon, that kind of thing. And uh, I was worried about that cholesterol. And with my doctor, we decided that I would go on more of a whole foods plant-based diet, which was much lower in fat. And I've been on that diet now for 10 months and it is going well. And my cholesterol is within the normal range. Now, after I dealt with my own health issues, I started to deal with the health issues of my parents. And basically my parents, my dad and my mom are wonderful. They are 90 and 88 years old, dad is 90. And they had been looking at assisted living type places or independent senior living type places for maybe about a year. And dad kept saying, oh, I don't think we're ready. I don't think we're ready. And you know, my dad was a PhD psychologist, so was my mom. 
They have a lot of brain power going, but as people get older, things change, and we really do need to keep an eye out for our parents. So me, my sister, and my brother were very, very happy that mom and dad were looking for a place to downsize. They live in a huge house right now that they've lived in for like 30 years. But every time we would talk to dad about, you know, have you made a decision about an assisted living place or an independent living place? He would say, oh, I don't think we're ready for that now. I don't think we're ready for that now. Well, to make a long story short, maybe about two to three months ago, dad had a fall. He was in a parking lot and fell over one of those parking blocks and he broke his jaw. I think almost immediately after having that jaw break in that fall, he realized it was probably time to get serious about moving into an assisted living. And they're going to be moving into the Rushwood Independent Senior Living Center, which is literally three minutes from our front door. So Alan and I will be able to go to visit them quite regularly. And in the meantime, Alan's mother, Darlene, she kept seeing these beautiful pictures of Rushwood, and here are some of the pictures of Rushwood. It is absolutely decorated beautifully. Each resident has their own apartment. Here's a look at their model apartment. Absolutely gorgeous. They have a restaurant on site with three menued meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You, you go into the dining room, and you can order what you want off the menu. They have a 24-7 snack bar with free sandwiches, yogurt and blueberries, all kinds of, you know, Doritos, all kinds of wonderful snacks. They have a free coffee bar, cappuccino bar. It is a wonderful place. And it also has activities for the seniors, which is great. So in other words, in the next like three weeks, we're moving mom and dad into Rushwood and then we'll be moving Darlene there. So in addition to dealing with my health problems, We've also been dealing with the health problems or the situations that arise with aging parents. Now we're getting into the point at which we bought this new home. And, and so what I'll do now is I'll take you on a brief tour and show you a little bit about how the construction process is going and also show you how Alan and I are living, which is pretty interesting. Okay, I'm just going to show you the things that have changed since the last video. All of the flooring has been taken out. The old walnut flooring has been removed. This will be removed. They have removed the carpet in this room. All of these rooms on the first floor that are wood will become white oak, which I had at my last house. Really like, there's the dining room there. The wall was removed. Let me show you how it looked before. And as you can see, it was very, very closed off. And then Brian took the wall down, which I'll show you in a future video. But there is the after picture, and it is a lot more open. I'm really so happy with how that turned out. Let me take you back to the master bath. Nothing has really changed in what I call the mini bedroom or the mini bath. This is the, this is the master, and those are doors from the front that were removed. And this is the master bath. Basically, they took out the drywall walls and this will end up being a glassy and large shower. They'll take out that soffit area. They removed both soffits up here. This was a really low ceiling there, which made this small bathroom appear even smaller. They took out the large sunken tub and will be putting in a smaller soaking tub right back there, plus a chandelier, and the electrician will be moving those can lights up to the ceiling. That should make this whole room appear larger. We are going to be going in with quartz, and here is the quartz we'll be using. I think it's very pretty, has a touch of off-white. Now, here we are in the great room area again. This is going to be drywalled in. Um, we wanted to take this out and expand the archway, but the drywaller found out there is plumbing in the top and the bottom of this, and so the archway cannot be widened without extensive repairs. So we're going to go ahead and put that back in but to make it blend, it was framed in before with a wood frame. We're going to have it just the drywall technique that's here, the wrapped drywall will be on three sides of it. And then we'll have a little ledge here. And then this is something kind of odd. And that is that about 15 years ago, they would build these granite bars on two levels. This is the seating type level. This is a bar level. So they would, they would do the granite like that. And that really cuts off this kitchen from both the kitchen eating area 
and the great room area. And so our carpenter is going to take down this wood and he'll bring all of the decor wood where it needs to be accordingly. But, but he said basically 15 years ago, he was installing these two tiered granite bars and now he's taking them out. How much fun is that? Now, this is a brief look at the laundry room. Nothing has really happened here except we can use the washer and dryer, which has been a blessing. We're sampling tile there. Now, let's go down and I'll show you real briefly where Alan and I are living. This is our basement living area. I jokingly say, and it's really true, I feel like I'm camping out. I did just clean it this morning, so it's actually cleaner right now than it was an hour ago. But we have a little makeshift kitchen in the bar area. And so this is where we do a lot of our food prep. There's where we eat, which was Alan's grandmother's table. She was a farm, farm lady in Kansas named Zena. She was wonderful. There's the mower out there, yay. Here is where we are watching a little bit of Netflix. We are going to have to remake that large built-in piece there because our TV does not fit. So we'll deal with that later. This is my exercise room. And I thought that I wouldn't even have enough equipment for it. It seemed like a large room. But as you can see, my equipment fits in there just fine. There's really no room for anything else. I also get, get made up in this room because in that little bathroom we use, the makeup light is just not strong enough. So I sit here on the floor and I do my makeup. So that's what I do. Let me go ahead and show you real quick where we're living each night. There's a storage room there and a storage room is ahead there. This is our little brown bathroom. And as you can see, the light is very gold. It is not easy to get made up in here. That's why I get made up in the exercise room. And we're living in this little bedroom, basement bedroom. It's just fine, the fan is very helpful. Well, that was a look at my current life status right now. And I will say it is very challenging personally to live in a construction zone. For instance, I still have boxes and boxes that I haven't unpacked in this makeup room, and I couldn't find a darker eyebrow pencil, so my eyebrows are looking particularly gray. I need to find that. I couldn't find my nose hair trimmer, and I think I've got like trees growing out of my nose. So it's really disorganized right now, which kind of drives me a little bit crazy, but I think within the next few weeks, we'll get more boxes unpacked, and we'll get more and more organized. So in the comments section, if you would like to leave me information about any details of your life, challenges with retirement, dealing with aging parents, moving, that kind of thing, I hope you'll share the information in the comments section because that way we can get to know each other a bit better.